Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're going to be talking about sigma notation. Sigma notation is a short way of writing sums. Sums just means a bunch of numbers added together. And you can see these sums here are being written in sigma notation. I'm going to show you how to convert sums to sigma notation and I'm going to show you how to go from sigma notation to sums in this video. So here we have sigma notation and we can look at the different parts. First, we have the Greek letter sigma, and this is just what mathematicians use to talk about sums. The number n at the bottom is called the index, and this is the variable that gets substituted into f of n. a is the smallest integer that goes into f of n, and b is the biggest integer that goes into f of n. We substitute every integer between a and b into f of n, Remember, integer means whole number. So you substitute every whole number into f of n between a and b. And then f of n is some expression for the general term in this series. Okay. You might want to screenshot this before we continue. Note that sometimes b is infinite, and this means that the sum continues forever. So the top uh, of the sigma has the infinite symbol, it means the uh, sum continues for every integer after a. Okay, for the series below, write out the terms and evaluate the sums. Okay, so here we have uh, the sum between n equals 3 and 7 of 5n plus 1. So we're going to substitute every integer between 3 and 7 into 5n plus 1, like this. So f of 3 is uh, 5 times 3 plus 1. f of 4 is 5 times 4 plus 1. And we continue substituting these integers into f of n. And here we've substituted all the integers between 3 and 7 into f of n. And now I can work it out. So 5 times 3 plus 1 is 16. 5 times 4 plus 1 is 21. I'm going to continue substituting them in and working out each of the terms. And we add them all together. 16 plus 21 plus 26 plus 31 plus 36 is 130. And we've done. We have added all the terms together. That is the final answer. 130. Now the sum between n equals 0 and 4 going to substitute every integer between 0 and 4 into that expression, minus 1 to the power n times n squared. So you're putting every number between 0 and 4 in, and we're going to replace the n's in the expression with those integers. So minus 1 to the power 0 times 0 squared, minus 1 to the power 1 times 1 squared, and we continue substituting these in like this. Now you can work this out using a calculator or through old-fashioned uh, working out. First term is 0, second term is minus 1, second term is 4, positive 4, next term is minus 9, next term is plus 16. And you can add and subtract those terms to find the full answer, which is 10. And the final answer is 10. We have done and we have evaluated these sums. Example 2, write the following series in sigma notation. So 4 plus 7 plus 10 plus 13, all the way up to plus 100. That dot 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 in the middle just means we're adding all the terms up to 100. And we have to find a general expression for the terms in this series. So you should see that it's going up in threes each time. And if we go backwards one term, we should get 1. And so the general nth term is 3n plus 1. So it's the sum from n equals 1 to something of 3n plus 1. We don't know what the final uh, term is, what the final n is, but we know the uh, term is 100. So let's make 3n plus 1 equal to 100. We subtract 1 off both sides and we divide by 3 and we get n equals 33. So the final n is 33 on the top of the sigma notation. And that is the final answer. Now we've got a third plus two fifths plus three sevenths plus four ninths. And again, we need to find a general expression 
for this series. This one is harder. We're going to find a general term for the numerator of those fractions and a general term for the denominator of those fractions separately. The numerators are just n. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Those are quite simple. But on the bottom, the denominator has a general term 2n plus 1. Because it's going up in twos, and if you go up, go backwards one uh, term, you get one. So it's 2n plus 1. The nth term of these fractions is n over 2n plus 1. The numerator is n, the denominator is 2n plus 1. So it will look like this. Sum from n equals 1 to something of n over 2n plus 1. But the ellipsis on the end means the series continues forever, until infinity. So the final term is infinite. And so you just put an infinity symbol on the top. And that is the final answer. So I've got some practice questions for you to try here. And so I'd like to pause the video and try to work out these uh, questions yourself. This should take you about 10 to 15 minutes. They're quite tricky. So please pause the video and take some time doing this yourself on pen and paper. Good luck. And when you're ready, I can reveal the answers in three, two, one. Did you get it correct? Let me know how well you did in the comments below. Thanks for watching and good luck in your exams.